So I know as we enter into the new year, a lot of people start to make some different resolutions. And one of those oftentimes is to prepare more meals at home, maybe some quick and easy things or healthy meals, things like that. I just wanted to show you guys a real quick way to put together some soup. So I just used a can of um, turkey broth. It's actually one of my home canned uh, cans that I had canned at home. However, uh, you can just use uh, chicken flavor bouillon works really, really well. I just go right according to what it says on the back. I think it's about a teaspoon or so per cup of water. That gives really great flavor. I had some leftover chicken here, and it's just really easy to put together soup because soup is just usually you can have some kind of broth, some kind of meat, some kind of vegetable, some kind of grain, and call it good. It's going to be hot and hearty and tasty. So in here, like I said, I just have some turkey broth, and then I also added some of the chicken bouillon, about a tablespoon and a half because I have two quarts of water. And then I just had whatever vegetables that I had on hand, which isn't a whole lot right now that works for this soup. So I put in a half an onion, and then I also had some carrots that I chopped up. Let's see if I stir this, you guys can see what all is in there. And then wild rice is my grain today. I had just enough wild rice to add to the soup. Rather than cook the wild rice ahead of time, um, you know, like in its own pot, I just added it right to the soup broth. And then I don't have to worry about draining any extra um, liquid. Just works really, really well. Wild rice takes about almost an hour to get soft. So about halfway through, I just added in the vegetables because those take about a half an hour or so to get soft. And speaking of just using what you have on hand, I have some frozen peas here as well. So near the end, I'm going to throw in about a cup or so of frozen peas. And then I think I showed you that I already had some leftover chicken. And that's going to be um, lunch. And that's going to be really flavorful. You can always add other seasonings. I actually did add in just a little bit of this crushed rosemary here. And then I also added some parsley as well. I try not to get the soup too salty right off the bat because uh, I just want to give it time to really cook thoroughly and then we can always salt and pepper it at the end to taste. That's one thing going on here. The next thing is in case you're not looking for you know total health for the new year and you just want a quick and easy dessert, this is really, really easy. This is called chocolate or lemon tort. I'm making the chocolate version because honestly that's really what Warren loves and so in here I have one chocolate, this happens to be devil's food, uh, one chocolate cake mix. I have one cup of coconut. I have an egg. And then I did melt some shortening here. This is a fourth of a cup. I'm going to put that in. And then I also have two tablespoons of water here. This is going to be a dry mixture. Now since this is a really dry mixture, I usually just kind of stir it up here, um, trying to incorporate any of the dry cake mix that's on the bottom, and then we're just going to pour it into this 9 by 13 pan. I already greased it, floured it, don't know if the flouring is absolutely necessary. It's just an older recipe and that's what older recipes tend to call for. So I pressed it in very, very tightly uh, into the 9 by 13 pan here. I'm going to bake this at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. So typically what I would do is while the crust is baking, I would make up the pudding mix. So it's either one large or two small um, boxes of pudding. This is just the instant pudding. And then each of these boxes calls for two cups of milk. I usually go about one and three fourths cup for each one. So about three and a half cups um, total, just so it's a little bit of a thicker pudding. Um, and then I just kind of let mix it up, let it set on the counter here until the crust has cooked, Put it, pour it over the top and let it cool and move on. But guess what? We are completely out of milk and that's what it looks like outside. So I'm not sure if we're going to be getting to the store anytime soon. So I think I'm going to just have to put this on hold for now, but I will come back <laughs> and show you all the finished product. The soup has about 15 minutes left to go. So I am going to open it up and add the peas. You're funny. 
Okay. Are you ready? I'm totally ready. family since I was just the littlest of little girls and I'm sure way way even before that I have fond memories of sitting on the counter and mixing up uh, harvest loaf for all of my aunts and uncles and neighbors and Sunday school teachers and whatnot but anyway on this particular occasion I started to make a harvest loaf earlier in the day like I did the uh, chocolate torte and ran out of ingredients so I did have to uh, wait it out but here I finally got back to it. I got the sugar that I needed. And in the bowl, what I have is, um, I have two cups of sugar and a cup of butter. And I'm just going to uh, mix that uh, along with four eggs. And then once that's all beat really, really well, I'll be adding a whole can of pumpkin. And again, just mix that really well. And then I did get all of my dry ingredients mixed up. You saw that I just poured that from a bowl straight in. And that was, um, let's see, one and three-fourths cup flour. Sorry, I doubled. <laughs> I always double the recipe. So that was actually three and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons baking soda, two teaspoons cinnamon, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of nutmeg, a half a teaspoon of ginger, a half a teaspoon of ground cloves, and I mix everything all up really well. Of course, I probably am tasting it there just to be sure that I did everything right. And then I do have to stir in by hand the nuts and the chocolate chips. So earlier in the day, Maria had ground up a bunch of nuts for me, which was so, so sweet of her to do. Uh, she just loves to always be helping out. And then I'm putting in an entire bag of uh, chocolate. Well, not quite the whole bag. Almost the whole bag of chocolate chips. I think it's about one and a half cups, which comes out to be just about the whole bag. But anyway, that it was just another fun thing to do on New Year's Eve while uh, I think Warren was over watching the um, like the Rock and Eve program or whatever. And the kids were actually the little kids were already in bed at this time. So I do use these small pans. I just spray them really well and then put the uh, batter into the pans. And once I have it all divided out between the four loaf pans, I do put a few more nuts on top. And then I bake this in a 350 degree oven for definitely 50 minutes, probably even longer. Um, I always have to test it just because I sometimes use different size loaf pans. And then the final tip with this bread is you have to let it cool completely, like all the way overnight before slicing it. It's a nice, dense bread, but still moist and so delicious in the morning for breakfast. Hey, 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 hey. Whoops. Whoops. Here. Well, you want to 
you want to? Okay. Yeah. 2006 Honda Shadow at 500 or something. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you this? Hi guys! 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 Hi guys!